Everyone got that? Decon dash layouts dash slides. And so welcome. No, I think we did that. Hola, as they say here. And so first, we're going to tell us really briefly. We're going to tell us. We're going to tell you really briefly who we are. I think I need more coffee. Um, so first, Josef. Hello. So my name is Josef Davonik, or Dasio in the Drupal community. Um, I'm deputy head of technology at the Macy Labs in Zurich. Um, but I originally come from Austria, and I really got started with Drupal in Central America. So I've been around the different Drupal communities quite a while. Um, started using Drupal 5, but mainly got, got into the weeds of site building, module development, front end um, with Drupal 6. Um, yeah, I'm quite active on the D8 rules initiative recently, where we, where we port the rules module to Drupal 8. And in general, being a tech lead at the Basie Labs, I'm really interested in what we're going to do about Drupal 8 as we already started building Drupal 8 sites. We kind of want to settle the ground for the new best practices um, for building layouts. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And my name is Adam Duran. I'm originally from the Washington, D.C. area in the U.S., and I make my home now in Cologne, Germany. Uh, I'm a senior front-end developer with Form 1, which is based out of Alexandria, Virginia. Uh, we work primarily with nonprofits and NGOs. Uh, our role is any company that does good in the world. Uh, I've been a Drupalist for uh, five or six years now, but a web developer for 17. Uh, I've done it all from logo design to schema design, uh, but I'm really, really happy as a front-end developer and working with layouts and, and that kind of a thing. Um, if any of you all saw uh, Coder versus Themer last year in Amsterdam, uh, I was the guy in the, the kung fu garb as Themer. And in case you missed the pre-note, uh, I sang, uh, I'm an also an opera singer, so there you go. So we wanted to also find out who we have in the room here. Um, so you guys know this, right? We want to find out who you all are. So um, raise your hand if you are a site builder. All right. Ray, keep your hands up if you are also a front-end developer. Yeah. Raise your leg if you are also a back-end developer. <laughs> Project managers also, anyone? Nice. And so, yeah, some of you do wear some various, various hats. Go. Yeah, that's kind of like the take on, so we talk about coding versus clicking and who does what. Um, well, coding could be a back-end developer, could be a front-end developer. And Drupal has this interesting role of the site builder who, who loves just clicking around the user interface. And we kind of felt like uh, to visualize it. So either you're more into front-end or you're more into site building. But actually, as you will find out in our talk, uh, building Drupal websites, it's, it's basically a combination of all those things. Uh, so we're going to quickly talk about uh, what, the, what the coding approach might look like. So it has some of its various aspects. Um, first of all, uh, front-end developers, especially now that uh, we're heading towards Drupal 8, we really want control of the markup. Uh, in the hi history of, uh, of Drupal, it's one of the things. When I first came to Drupal and my friend uh, showed me a website he wanted to help me theme, I was like, what is that? I'm, I'm not touching that. Um, so we really want, you know, different, different markup. And for some front-end developers, some people who are site builders, you also don't really want to get into the PHP, and that's not your thing. You're really like more of a pure HTML, CSS kind of person. In Drupal, you kind of still have to sometimes work with PHP, um, but you don't have to. There are ways around it. Um, going back to the markup, we want it to be beautiful. We want clean markup, no extra divs. Just talk to Morton about that. And um, Twig. Twig is coming. Twig is awesome. Uh, it has a lot of uh, amazing functionality. Can't do my school queries from your templates anymore. I mean, this is, this is a very good thing. So to summarize, those of us in the coding school, we want to take control. We don't want to touch PHP. We want beautiful markup. And we love Twig. Right. So on the other hand side, I, being a clicker, I don't really know how to use PHP Storm. I rather go on on you know. the internet and well, I know PHP, but I have to be in my role, right? All right, all right. <laughs> um, so first of all, click all the things. Um, install a module, fire up 
panels, fire up managed display. Um, we can do everything as being site builders. Drupal gives us so much power, um, which I think is really a great thing. Um, and we don't have to always hire a developer to, to just assemble a website. We can do a lot of stuff via the user interface. And of course, keep calm, click all the things. Um, also, when talking about layouts, um, maybe somebody has seen the Spark initiative. Or have you ever been using uh, panels where you can actually create your own layouts via the user interface? Um, so yeah, we kind of want to have all the control through clicking instead of writing code. Um, and that might be a good thing, that might be a bad thing. Um, yes. And what was the last one? Uh, no. Yeah, one exactly. So, and uh, you know the context system? So we really, like, Actually, myself, I'm more a software engineer, so I want to do things right. And the cool thing about panels, for example, is that the context system really allows me to decouple stuff, to pass on arguments into a mini panel, for example. Um, so, so therefore, while I'm still clicking, I can actually build stuff that makes sense, um, which is kind of great. So to summarize that, uh, we want to manage our field display within the backend rather than writing templates. Uh, we want to also define layouts in the backend. Uh, we're going to find out if that's possible in Drupal 8 already. Um, we want to control all the markup from the backend. So, for example, in Drupal 7, there's like semantic panels, for example, would allow you to control all the markup, or display suite would allow you to do that, um, which is actually something that my colleague Coder is using, right? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm a huge fan of panels clean markup, which allows me to take out many of the extra layers of divs. Uh, it's, an, it's an awesome module. I'm, for, for the record, not a pure coder. I use the best tool available to me. But for the sake of today, I'm a coder. Right. So we had a little, little back and forth on that topic. And yeah, but in the end, let's see what, what we come up with. Um, so rather than just talking about philosophies, you versus me, I versus you, uh, we felt like it would be most appropriate to talk about a few examples, um, which are common use cases, um, and we actually build a website for them. So the four examples will be, we want to create a, a very simple content layout, we want to create a complex landing page, then we want to do some variations, let's find out how that works. And finally, we want to do more complex content layouts that maybe pull in additional information that is not available on the content type itself. And in order to do so, uh, we have an example. So <clears throat> we kind of love attending conferences like this. And one part of the conferences are the sessions. And thanks for showing up for our session today. And another very critical part is people sprinting on initiatives, sprinting on Drupal core, making stuff happen so that we potentially can use the software um, in our daily day-to-day day -day business. Um, so one of the conferences that Adam and me attended was Drupal Camp North, was pretty awesome. More than 100 people showed up there, and they had a big focus on sprints. So the website that we're presenting here um, just aggregates a few people that signed up to sprint at Drupal Camp North. And we can see that some of them, they have the mentor love, so they are actually signed up to be mentors to help others to get into Drupal. <clears throat> and then we can also see down there that there are different initiatives that have been represented at the Drupal Camp. Um, so we already see, okay, there's a, like a landing page that aggregates stuff. And then we have um, the user profiles that will be rather like a simple content layout that splits up fields into a left and a right column. Um, so that's kind of the, the setting that today we want to deconstruct based on either the coding approach or either the clicking approach. All right, okay, so sprinters have an overview. That's what it's gonna look like. Cool, so I think we're gonna go on to the simple content layout. Um, as you can see up here, Whoa, ah, what did I do? Oh my God, <laughs> almost there. Fast forward. Oh, yes. Whew. All right, so this is, uh, this is a user node, and this is, you guys know Lewis Nyman? He's awesome. Um, he was one of my first uh, mentors, actually, when I first started doing a core contribution. And 
so here, this is a really, really simple layout. It's two columns, 50%. I mean, not the most beautiful thing in the world, but for our purposes, uh, it uh, serves us rather nicely. And there's, we're going to talk about the coding approach. And it's really, really quite simple. There, there it is. You can see that uh, I created within an article, uh, I just created my two div structure in the CSS, which I'm not going to show you. I float user first and user second left with 50%. Boom, done. Uh, and w out of the box, these fields come with uh, a wrapper div, uh, uh, a label, and a div, a field item div. And you don't necessarily need all of this, but I like just enough wrappers so that when things go responsive, things get grouped right and uh, it makes ultimately theming much easier. So there you go. That's pretty much, boom, done. I guess the nice thing about Twig here is also that there's no PHP code involved. So you caring about beautiful markup and not having to touch PHP, uh, Twig and Drupal 8 is a really, really great um, thing that we have. So on the other hand side, clicking. How could I accomplish that? In Drupal 7, there's different modules that would allow us to do that. There would be panels, there would be display suite, um, and that's basically it. Um, we could also- I'm gonna say, I can go to the other mic. Sure. For the record, it is my personal preference that when you're dealing with an individual node that you use display suite, because everything is pretty much coming to you, rather than panels. Panels seems like overkill for dealing with fields from a given node. No, I disagree. <laughs> All right. Because I, I want to have things consistent. So if my developers have to deal with display suite and then with panels and then with panels everywhere, it's just like one piece that is not consistent with the others. True, but couldn't you just have in your panel the rendered entity of that node and let the actual layout and how you manipulate the fields be in display suite for that view mode? Everything is possible. All right. And, and that's actually what we did at, at Trunomics, the, the company where I worked for before. Mm. We tried to manage everything, as you say, uh, for managed display in display suite and use panels for the more advanced stuff. Um, but I just kind of feel like it's, it's redundant. From Lots time. of different ways to get there from everywhere. Cool. Sorry, um, No, that's fine. So let's look at this. Um, <clears throat> So when I have my Drupal 8 site up and running and all, there's, there's not much special going on here, I just installed the admin, what's it called, admin toolbar, I think, the, the new module instead of the admin menu so that we can quickly access stuff here. And I, and I downloaded Display Suite. And Display Suite is one of the, the modules that has been ported very early to Drupal 8, which is great. And it's pretty much working, um, or most of it is working. So. Um, I can see here, I have um, diff all my different entity types and their uh, bundles um, where I can manage to display for them. And in our particular case, we want to have um, a layout on the user. So the user entity, let's check out manage display for it. And what we can see here down there, it's pretty sim similar to how it was in Drupal 7. Uh, we can just select from one of the layouts. Um, so when I disable that and go back on the user page, we had Luis, right? We can see that it's um, as Twig has also this nice debug feature. Isn't it supposed to be back in two columns? I mean, one column. It didn't. Leave the cache clear. Well, what it's doing right now is it's it's taking the um, the template, so the implementation, or is it no? <laughs> Shit, that live demo is is going great. <laughs> okay, um, we were talking about this place. It so when we enable this. Because we have like two things going on. We have the theme layer and we have the display suite layer uh, in the same installation, which is kind of funny for, for live demos. Um, 
So when I enable it, it should be Broken. throwing stuff at me. OK, cool. <laughs> Yeah, so you kind of have to save twice, but then it works. Um, it's a feature, not a bug. It's kind of cool. <laughs> and yeah, so that's basically <laughs> what Display Suite can do for us. Um, it works pretty much. It's still in an alpha phase. Uh, so especially when updating Drupal 8, uh, as we did last day, you will find out more notices popping up. But the great thing is on Friday sprints, we can try to fix more of them. Um, which is good. So, so um, uh, a quick review that in encoding for the our simple contact layout, we we used in D7 we used the PHP template, Drupal 8 we used Twig, uh, and for clicking, you have DS and panels, uh, and panels is coming soon for D8. They're working really hard on it, uh, but like there's a lot of uh, some of the stuff that was in D7 is now in core with the field API, um, and DS is there, but needs your help on Friday. So, uh, landing page. This was actually, this is the same as the home page, yes? Yeah. Yeah. So this basically has this view of the sprinters, um, and those who are mentors get their little, like, mentor love tag, and this is what the bottom looked like, and this is a different table, uh, just another view, and... Uh, I'm going to contradict myself. Something I said earlier about uh, the front enders, the um, that we don't like uh, the coders, that we don't like PHP. I used to be a PHP developer, so I'm going to cheat. I'm not sure actually how I would do this otherwise. But um, oh, that was wait, where did it go? Yeah, we started with clicking it. Oh, all right, this is supposed to be you then. Sorry, I'll shut up now. So, um, <clears throat> in order to have a landing page layout. Um, first, I need the layout, and while clicking, it's not possible because we don't have a layout builder available in Drupal 8 so far. Um, but there's already modules like Radix layouts that you can just download, and it provides you with a bunch of predefined layouts already. And this is how an example looks like. So, um, r still being a clicker, I think I can fill out, uh, I can just define a couple of regions, and that should be fine. And then, um, we mentioned that panels is not ready, but actually the panels ecosystem is already pretty far in implementation. So the context API or the context system of panels went into Drupal core. We also use it for the rules initiative and page manager, for example, can also already use it. And then there's a layout plugin, which, is, which doesn't give us all the flexibility that panels gave us, um, but it's still, it's already a good starting point and let's find out how that looks like. So when I go into my site, we have seen how Display Suite works, and we'll now check out how uh, pan Page Manager works. So after installing it, similarly to um, how it works in, in Drupal 7, you will have the pages under Structure, and there you can just define your own custom landing pages. <clears throat> and I'm just going to show how that process looks like, because it's a bit confusing. Um, so I'm going to create my landing page. And then Page Manager presents me uh, with a new layout, like Page Manager in, in Drupal 7 and Panels had, had this left sidebar where you had to go through context and content, and um, people got really confused about that. Um, so how it works right now is that you can define available context, and we can see that the current user is a globally context that is available. So this user object will then be, we can then pass on to blocks, for example, as an argument, um, which is kind of cool. So we don't rely on a global argument from the URL, but the page knows itself what it contains and what the, inf the information that it has, and then can pass it on. Um, so that's the first part. Then the second part is the display variant. So we can actually have multiple different display variants um, in order to have like fallbacks for maybe different permissions. Um, the anonymous user should see one version and the logged in user should see another um, version. And finally, we have access conditions. Um, who should actually be able to access the page? So by default, the 
the page manager just has a status code, an HTTP status code to return. But with the layout plugin, we can also create panels like uh, landing pages here. So given that I've installed the layout plugin module and page manager, I'll get presented with a very confusing list of options here. And it's important for you to, to just choose the block page with layout plugin integration option. That probably will be more simplified along the way, but it already works for us and we have already used this on production websites. Um, so feel free to try it as well. Um, so we're gonna select the block page. We're gonna um, be able to select a layout here. And we can see that I've, based on the Radix mo layouts module, I've, I'm presented with a, a long list of available layouts. Which you're not gonna use. <laughs> which we're not going to use, exactly. Um, we have display suite layouts. So the nice thing is that by default, they all share the same concepts. Uh, I also have a test layout that I just created via code. Um, good. For this landing page, we basically just need a one column layout, but because the actual power that we want to leverage is the possibility to place multiple different items along each other, and we don't need to layout it especially because it's just on top of each other. <clears throat> so what I can do now is I can place blocks into, into the region that the layout provides. Um, and that's kind of, it's kind of similar to the block placement dialog that they have in Drupal 8 core uh, itself. It will, it will just show you all the system blocks and in this case um, we have uh, a list of initiatives that is a view. Um, we can also pass on some, some settings onto the view, and then we just select where to display it. And we can do the same for um, the sprinters. Oops. OK, cool. So and we can move them around here. Um, save the variant, cross fingers, and the page has its own path now. Mm -hmm. It's a landing page. It's a bit different as the home page, but it works similarly. We just choose another order. Um, so the concept of composing landing pages in Drupal 8, page manager, the layout plugin, I think it's really solid at the moment already. It doesn't have all the capabilities that Panels has in order to be able to place individual fields. We will have to wait for patches, um, but the community is really working hard on it and you can just join on Friday to, to, to move things forward there. Um, so that's landing pages for clickers. So in, uh, for us coders, like I was saying earlier, um, you don't have as many options. So we're going into our dot theme file. It's what we used to call the the um the template.php, but it's now called uh the your theme name dot theme. And there's a pre-processed page, and you can see that no matter what he does, I can be a jerk and overwrite all the page content because this happens after panels with its layout plugin gets rendered. Um and if I go, how does this work? Um, is this round again? Yeah, yes. No, where's oh, Pete? I do. Whee! That one. Boom. All right, there it is. So I can, I was lazy, so i did not actually going to live code in front of you because that's boring. But you can see that I'm, A, resetting the page content. Ha, ha, ha. And using views embed view, which still exists, has the same name. This is the machine name for the view. This is the machine name for the display, and I'm going to save this, and then go, ah, come back. Yeah, this is right, I've saved. Ha ha, and you can see that my template has, my um, preprocess function has, has overwritten what he had. So, don't, but uh, yeah, better actually to communicate with your team members rather than just to obliterate their work, you know, just saying. All right. Um, 
Ah, and additionally, so this was the preprocess function. Additionally, um, the other part is that if you saw me set the, this variable of u1 and of u2, I have to create, um, let's go back over here. Oh my goodness, I'm terrible at this. So, nope, this one. This is, can we make this bigger? Yep. Oh God. Yep, cool. So, this is page dash dash front dot html dot twig. And the first thing we can do, because we can do this in Twig, is you can extend the previous template, uh, which basically says this is going to be a variation on the existing one, and then you get to tell it how it's going to be different. Um, this, th this is the coolest part. This parent function, this is what the parent is. That's what this defaults to. So I can say, first I'm going to show the parent, and then I'm going to find page.view, which is what we set in my preprocess uh, there. If the, the second one exists, we'll render that as well. Um, and we will get to the, the footer stuff later. Um, but you'll see that this view here where it, uh, is the same as page.view. You see this? Variables page view one is, where did it go? This page dot view one see that works all right maybe a quick question what, what what is the parent now outputting the parent is would have attempted to be outputting what you just created except that I told it to go away and print this instead Excellent. moving cool. So to, to sum all that up, uh, encoding, we have preprocess and custom template. That hasn't changed that much. The syntax has obviously changed a little bit, but how you would go around it is largely, largely similar. And for clicking? Yeah, we basically got the tools page manager panels, um, and in Drupal 8, panels is not ready, but with the layout plugin, we get pretty far uh, by building landing pages. So. Here's a quick wrap up on the different technologies. Um, you want to start with the? Sure. Uh, this is just a really uh, rough. For site builders, uh, D7, you had PHP template. Now we have Twig. Uh, I'm sure you've all gone to a million sessions on Twig, so that's not really what we're covering here today, but that is, the new, that is what is new in Drupal 8. Uh, and we still have our preprocess functions, but no markup, please. Markup does not belong in preprocess functions. You can put logic in there, and then you can apply, send those, the variables that you create in your preprocess over to your Twig template and then run the logic there. Um, it's, uh, oh, I wish I had that example. I have examples that I, can, I could show later. Uh, I worked heavily on the uh, pagination for Drupal 8, and that was, we had to rip, there's all sorts of crazy markup in the uh, pagination functions, which all got ripped out uh, and is now the vast, vast, vast majority is in the twig template for the pager. Um, but that's kind of, it's a paradigm shift and you need to be attentive to that because if you leave markup in your preprocess in Drupal 8, it's, it, the maintain, maintainability goes south real fast. Yeah, big shout outs to the front end team for removing all of those preprocess functions and replacing them by twig templates, awesome. Um, yeah, panels, the, the similarities, as mentioned, page manager with layout plugins or we wait for panels. And context module, there's no context module plans for Drupal 8, so the maintainers have said that they will wait for um, clients asking them to implement it, but they don't have particular plans to update the context module. Uh, so hands up, who's waiting for the context module in Drupal 8? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, um, yeah, I think that's going to be interesting, and maybe uh, there's maybe some workarounds to that, so with uh, visibility rules on individual panes in panels, maybe that's a workaround, but still the different concepts of pushing information into a layout or pulling it, um, so context just allowed us from different places to add information onto the page, whereas with, pan with panels we basically define everything that has to be in the page up front, and then we can selectively disable panes, for example. 
Um, so the push concept, I haven't seen any, any approaches yet in Drupal 8 out there, um, besides maybe writing code and just injecting additional uh, stuff into the templates. Um, right. And finally, Display Suite uh, pretty much stays the same. We have seen that panels it changes a bit. It's like a whole rewrite. Um, Display Suite um, also changed a lot under the hood. But the, the concepts, the way that uh, Display Suite works is really, really similar. So if you're looking into um, a straight upgrade from your Drupal 7 experience to Drupal 8, uh, Display Suite will be the most comfortable from my perspective. And also, of course, Manage Display itself is really similar from Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. So back to the lab, back to our examples. We were on example number three, uh, which is the default layout with variations. And the variation in this particular case is not incredibly uh, beautiful or interesting, but uh, it's just to have a on the home page a different uh, treatment of the page footer, and I'm going to walk us through that. So this was the in our page.html.twig in the the default uh, default page template. We expanded this the the footer block so it has a container. It's got top section with four different uh, panes. It's got a bottom section with another one. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much standard twig. And how you implement it is we have, this is also, uh, you may have caught this a little bit, at the bottom of our page dash dash front dot html dot twig, this is where we're going to, we're extending that. And the footer part of that is uh, we added this fancy footer with a little, uh, intro, a little div above it, and a little div below it. You obviously can do whatever you want in this type of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, so let me just go to remind everyone what that looked like was here. So on a normal page, just to demonstrate, the normal footer is just solid black. I know it's, it's not a very exciting example. But there it is. We can gives us the point is that we can override our default layout through twig and kind of it gives us a lot of flexibility without disturbing the hierarchy and a lot of power as well so okay so um yeah so oh what is this <laughs> i forgot what i meant by redundant code <laughs> Ah, yes. See, in PHP 7, you actually need a separate template and you can't extend things. So you actually have to have the standard code actually exist twice, whereas through extending, the standard code exists once and you just say extend blah, 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 and then you write your modifications. Uh, in Drupal 8, it's, uh, you only have to do it once, which is, as everyone knows, a good thing. Clicking. Yeah, I tried to come up with the clicking solution for extending Twig templates, and I don't have one. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry for that. Maybe somebody has an idea? Nope. So, we're just going to keep a good relationship to our front ends, and then we can extend stuff together. Um, yeah. So, it's basically hard or impossible because all the solutions that I see for site building is you have to define it upfront, which is not extending afterwards. Um, Maybe you could do some magic with mini panels. Um, I don't know. It's not really the, the way that, that site building works um, at the moment. Um, so here's our last example. Um, we have seen a simple content layout. We've seen a landing page. We've seen how we can uh, modify different pieces of the website. And I think one of the main work tasks that we do when building websites is creating uh, more complex content-based layout. So, um, and we strip it down to a very simple example. So we can see Frontend United being an initiative um, that makes Drupal frontend better. Um, its own entity, its own content display. And then we can see a list of users that have signed up for this initiative. So we show additional related content as a view block. And 
starting from Drupal 5 to Drupal 6, 7. Um, we have seen a lot of different approaches to doing that. Um, so one of them could be entity views attach. Uh, one of them could be the context module. One of them could be page manager and panels. Um, and one of them could be display suite. So let's find out how we do that. Um, so the, 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 really, the most simplest thing is to just use the core blocks administration. Um, but as you can imagine, when you have to, so you would just place the, the sprinters that are related to the initiative uh, as a block into a region. But as you can imagine, if you do that multiple times, your block administration will be very long and cluttered, and you will just not be able to, to make any sense of it anymore. And this, is, this was one of the main use cases for the context module, uh, because we could split it up into separate contexts that would just uh, enable blocks afterwards, which is great. So the core blocks is not very much of an option. Uh, it gets things done, but it's not sustainable. Um, and for Drupal 8, um, I actually just found out about that feature while preparing the presentation because I was not a big user of Display Suite. Um, but Display Suite has a nice feature of so-called block fields. So what it does, it just allows you to pull in a block as a field onto the entity, which is kind of similar to entity views attach, where yeah, you could attach a view to an entity. But in this case, we can attach any kind of block to any kind of entity. Uh, which is kind of cool. So let's walk through that. that. Um, <clears throat> so display suite, besides managing the displays, it also has some tabs up here. And one of the tabs is where I can create my own custom fields. And display suite has different field types available. In this case, we want to use a block field. So we just add a block field with uh, Let's call it initiative um, sprinters for the people that uh, work on the initiative. And we're going to attach this block to the entity type of node. And then we're going to need a bit of coding for site builders to write down the, the node type, um, which in this case is initiative. And then we also have to write a pipe and the star, where the star could be any bundle restriction, or in this case, we wanna we wanna have the field appear on all the on all the different view modes um, of the of the initiative. So it could be full display, could be uh, just a teaser view mode. And then down here, um, I can select from all the all the blocks that I have in the system. Mm, so we got a sprinters list. Then we save that. We have it already done. So <clears throat> as I created the field before for testing, here it is. And then over to my content type administration in the initiative content type. When I go to manage display, I can now see that I have already pre-configured pre as, we, as we already um, prepared the presentation. We have the initiative sprinters field um, being available, exposing that block uh, into my content UI. Oh, great. Unfortunately, this demo broke yesterday when I upgraded to Drupal 8 Core. Um, so I, hope, I, I would hope to fix that on Friday, or maybe somebody would volunteer to help us fix that. Um, so besides of the screenshots, um, sorry, like it's working on the screenshot, but it's currently not working on the install. It's broken, sorry. And for the coding, this is actually incredibly similar to the pre-process and template work that we did before. Uh, in a, you create a twig template for the this node type. Uh, so it could be page dash dash initiatives at html twig, and add your own divs with your width fifty percent and your float left, and it uh, works just like what it did for the uh, user nodes that we demonstrated as the uh, basic content example. So, moving right along. So, uh, d as the, to summarize that, um, using uh, Drupal 7, we could invoke blocks of views from the template. Um, and, uh, actually, same in Drupal 8, actually. 
Actually, in Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 in this case are, are largely sim similar. Uh, the only differences were the things I said before about uh, no markup in the, in the uh, preprocess. Yeah, I guess, I guess the difference is that within Twig, uh, you wouldn't be able to invoke the blocks themselves. No. But it would force you to use the preprocess so to separate the logic of preparing the information and then use it in the template. Yep. Whereas in, in Drupal 7, you could still just invoke blocks or execute MySQL queries from the template. Don't say that. <laughs> yeah, that's why we have to move on to 8, right? Um, and for clicking, there's a lot of options, as mentioned. There's entity views attached, displays with dynamic fields, uh, panels. Um, and in Drupal 8, um, pretty similar. And um, if we all help out with the panels initiative, it will be much faster available uh, to complete that, that part of functionality for us. Yes. Hmm. So yeah, what about deployment? How do we take what we do on our local machines, move it up to dev, to staging, to production? What are our options there? I guess um, for site builders, it's really exciting that we have the CMI initiative. Um, so we can basically be sure that everything that we click together will be exported to the Active Directory folder. And then we can just add it to a Git repository um, and import it on the live site. Um, so that's kind of cool. What do you do about your code? Uh, well, using, let's assume we're all using Git, right? So then any changes to your code, you put in your feature branch, you move it up. Uh, for the, I, one caveat though, for, the, for the, the UI, for the site building stuff that you do through the UI, I don't know, who, who here has tried um, configuration management in Drupal 7? How'd that go for you? I, I, I have nightmares. You liked it? Well, that's awesome. I, it, it is mm, not my friend. I, I was much more happy with features in Drupal 7. But that, lots of different solutions. Anyway, but yes, using Git, feature branches, and so on, et cetera. Yep. Cool. So uh, what did you all learn today? We actually, actually want to hear like, from a few people, like, what do you feel that you understand now that you didn't understand 45 minutes ago? Someone? Anyone? Context is not coming to Drupal 8, no. It, it might still come. It's just, you can do it. You want to know what we learned? Yes. Well, we still need panels. That's what we want to do the panels. Yes, we still need panels. Well, it depends on what you want to do, but panels is coming, and, and I think most of us want the power that it gives us. So what exactly do you need it for that you can't do right now? Styles, exactly, yeah. Flexible layouts, you shouldn't do them. No, the markup is, the markup is awful. It's, it's not good. That's possible, but if you're using something like Radix, where you can just choose a different layout and move the. So I need to make a, a layout for every. You don't have using Radix. You don't have to make them. They're already they're pre-made. You just have to select them or have the even the editor select them and move the panels around. In a theoretical world, the layout of a given component or or pane isn't dependent on its parent. That it will. If it's truly responsive, it will change shape or deal with what the space, excuse me, the space allotted to it. This is easier said than done, and also not the, the subject of this particular talk, but if you want to talk later, I'm rather passionate about this particular subject. All right, um, so what we think we were able to share is that encoding versus clicking, that each has its strengths and weaknesses. Um, and though clearly neither is the best for every situation, uh, and that you, for most of you who work on teams of with at least one or more person, you really need to collaborate. You need to communicate early and often. So yeah, this is a great uh, quote. There's lots of different ways to get certain tasks done, and that leads us to this picture, which I liked. It's all about the cats, right? Um, it's coding and clicking. So it's really more about coding and clicking, not 
either or or not one against the other. It really has to be a, a team a team effort. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I guess um, there's a lot of stuff that's similar to how it was in Drupal 7. There's a lot of new stuff going on. We Especially for the front enders, they can learn a lot of new technologies. For the site builders, they will run into a lot of bugs. Um, so it's like everybody can learn stuff and um, things got to be interesting. Um, also, yeah, the, the way how Drupal code is structured is very different. The YAML files, uh, all the classes are split up. Um, so, yeah, but basically, I, th I think for site building, it's pretty much the same. It's just uh, the lack of options that we have at the moment. But the good thing is we can really do things. Uh, one one approach that I didn't mention that we used actually for the mazelabs.com website uh, a year and a half ago um, was to use views, headers, and footers to create layouts. So uh, you can attach a view to another into the header, into the header, into the header. And um, uh, our team loves maintaining that website. Um, <laughs> But it was the only option back then to, to do a site building based approach to, to layouts. But since then, you've used Pan, Page Manager and Layouts plugin, right? Yes. Good. So now for all the new websites, we, we use the best available tools. Excellent. So the good news is you do not have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You, you know, when, when I first started learning about Drupal 8 and Twig and all these things, I was like, oh, my God, this is so much new information. But in terms of our process as site builders, uh, not that much has changed. Uh, and I think that's really important to realize that, you know, to, to, to be able to map in your, in your mental paradigm of what you're actually doing, that you're not, you don't have to start over. So, so much of what you already know will 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 uh, bridge rather relatively seamlessly into Drupal 8. So we learned a lot. Anyway, um, oh yes. So I always like to end with a little fun fact, and this is the best thing I, I found so far about uh, Barcelona. The Sagrada Familia has taken longer to build than the Giza pyramids. In fact, 10 times longer. It took only uh, 200 years with ancient tools and, well, by ancient tools, they must mean slave labor um, to build the pyramids. But uh, Sagrada Familia is still 200 years, and it's still not done yet. Um, it reminds me of I think the, it's like scope creep or something. It reminds on the on the pre-note, right? We had that analogy. Yes, exactly. Um, so yeah, there's Sagrada Familia, there's pyramids. And yes, yeah, so we've all learned a lot. Our brain is now full. And, uh, oh, yes. So if you want to work with a creative team that's really distributed, uh, you, we have job positions open. Um, that's the way we work together. Um, and yeah, just hit on our website slash jobs to work with us in Zurich, in Cape Town, or in Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. Um, thank you all for attending. And I th feel like this would be a great opportunity to raise more questions, because there's definitely a lot of stuff that we haven't covered. Uh, and feel free to f throw your questions at us. Questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So uh, you can go to uh, this bit.ly to uh, evaluate our session. We would greatly, greatly appreciate that. Thank you all for attending. Uh, if you all have questions that you uh, want to ask the group, that's great, or just come up to us right now, uh, we're available. So thank you very much.